myself Raja, I'm the founder of Thailand Real Estate Insiders. Welcome to our interview, our uh, program today. Um, today I have got an awesome, awesome guest, and it'd be great to have the honor to actually uh, introduce him. But first, let me get on with the title what we are about today. The title today is How to Run a Successful Real Estate Agency that brokerage over 5,000 properties almost single-handedly and gives you a seat as a judge in the Thailand Property Award year in and year out. Okay, so let me introduce the man who did this. The man who we have today is Clayton Wade. He's the Managing Director of Premier International and its subsidiaries like Premier Land and Development and Premier Homes. One of the most sought after recognized real estate agency in Kelsey in the Eastern Seaboard and that he and his wife, Prince of Club, started some 18 years back. I don't think enough could be said to honor his accomplishments. He has been in real estate industry for over 25 years, having started his real estate career in the United States. He was licensed and practiced both real estate sales and property management in Seattle. He was also personally responsible for bringing in the first 53 General Motors executives for the startup phase of Thailand General Motors Manufacturing Facility and had a three-year exclusive contract with the company. Following that experience, he placed most all of the startup executives for the Eastern Seaboard's BMW manufacturing facility. He is known throughout the Asia-Pacific region for his writing, public speaking, and television presentations, including his appearing as the resident real estate consultant for Thailand's property profile show. He's also been featured with top political and business leaders on CNBC's Managing Asia program. He's a member of the VSAM, the Real Estate Sales and Marketing Association, a member of the prestigious Gerson Lerman Group. He sits in the judge panel of the Thailand Property Award event that will uh, be happening next week. And yes, I could go on and on. And oh yes, his American good looks somewhat resemble the late Patrick Schwarze. So Clayton. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you very much, and thank you for having me on your program. Uh, actually, i make it a little old. It's actually been 28 years now. Uh, I started, as you mentioned, in Seattle. And uh, in uh, the United States, particularly in my state of Washington, uh, you must be uh, studied and be examined by a state licensing uh, group and uh, I did that and I passed and uh, was licensed uh, as a real estate uh, agent in Washington State. I did that in 1985 and practiced there for about six years. Uh, I also did property management. I managed uh, quite a large apartment complex uh, just actually just north of uh, you know, uh, Microsoft uh, office there and uh, just outside of Seattle. And uh, here uh, for 18 years now, my wife and I have run Premier Homes Real Estate Company and Premier Land and Development. Okay, great. Um, what area of real estate are you a specialist in? Well, actually, when my wife and I first came down to the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, oh, it was about 1920 years ago. We we noticed how many of how many of uh, conglomerates, the big corporations from all over the world, particularly the petrochemical, gas, uh, and the auto industry. So we realized that there was going to be a, a real big business here in relocation, uh, in bringing in these uh, management and executive le level uh, workers for these multinationals. So we started out uh, uh, as a corporate relocation company, and that still is our core business. Uh, although we also do uh, uh, exclusive uh, rentals and uh, exclusive sales as well on the high-end properties. All right. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about Premium International and its subsidiaries and what what functionality it has and like how, how do you segment the, the, the each each companies? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, with Premier Homes, uh, again, uh, primarily a corporate relocation company, um, as you had mentioned, uh, brought in uh, the first 53 executives for General Motors. That was uh, actually a, a really 
positive experience for us and uh, gave us a lot of the learning uh, that we gained early in our career. Uh, Premier Land and Development, um, we've had a couple of uh, uh, developments that we've been involved that we helped uh, broker. Uh, we had one condominium here uh, up on Pratamnock Hill that we were involved with, and uh, we've also a certain number of uh, housing development developers. Uh, so those two companies, it's Premier Land and Development is where we like to see our future. Uh, Premier Homes continues on a regular basis for years now, supporting the uh, corporation. By the way, in, in conjunction with General Motors, um, we've also done uh, BMW and their startup executives, and we continue supporting Esso, Exxon, uh, Caterpillar, uh, any of these big corporations that uh, are around the eastern seaport area. All right. I think the first time I met you was at uh, the Certified International uh, Problem Specialist, right, SIPS, the training last year. I sort of wanted to ask you for a while now, uh, why Thailand and why Pattaya, of all the places? Oh, that's a, a crazy story. Uh, I won't make it too long, but uh, uh, 23, I was in uh, the very beginning few days of a two to three year uh, sailing trip with a, a girlfriend back in America on her sailing yacht. And uh, we had uh, done a lot of studying, and I docked the uh, uh, sailboat for six months, and done all our repairs, studies. Uh, we had gone to offshore sailing seminars. Uh, we even went to, we were suggested to go to a psychiatrist, have them talk with us and see if we were capable of staying in a confined and small area for uh, long periods of time. So we were all prepared. and. Uh, we were only out about uh, maybe, I think it was our third or fourth day, and uh, we uh, a huge storm, a really a bad one, uh, near death, I would say, and uh, it was a little emotional for her, and her being captain, she had uh, questions about uh, our sailing trip, and I immediately jumped on plan B, and within uh, an hour's conversation, uh, I walked off the uh, the yacht with a green duffel bag, and uh, landed here in Thailand 72 hours later. Uh, that's the real story, and uh, was very lucky. Uh, nobody here in Thailand had no good reason to be here. Uh, I had uh, an attraction to the area, and I decided if I'm not going to sail around the world, I'm going to start in Thailand. Uh, I landed. I got really, really lucky. <laughs> Somehow I landed a job after six days here, and with very little money, 23 years ago, uh, I started out uh, as the Thailand National Fencing Coach. I worked for the Thai government, their uh, sport of thrones out by Long Kampang University, and uh, I trained in the Thai National Fencing Team for several years. And that's the crazy story. That's how I got here. <laughs> Uh, to make the story short, I think you nearly got shipwrecked, and that settles you in Thailand, and you never left it again. <laughs> All right. So um, your 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 agency, right, is one of the most sought after uh, real estate agency in in the Eastern Seaboard, and uh, I think one of the most recognized in Thailand. I don't think that comes easily. Or it, it must have come with hard work, integrity, honor. So tell me why were, why these values were, were important to, or are still important to you. Well, I I must admit uh, things were so challenging and difficult when we started. Uh, we didn't have any choice. We had to uh, just be the best we could be in everything we did as as people um, and as uh, professionals. And uh, my wife Supak is a. Uh, Thai Buddhist, and uh, there's no other way to live in, in her life. And of course, uh, we were partners, and, and uh, so hard work, and, and as you said, integrity, uh, and being just honorable people is, is just a necessity for us. 
Okay, great. What, what becomes possible now as you have so much recognition and results under your belt? Um, well, there's, there's all kinds of, you know, over the years we've watched uh, some of our very good Thai friends and foreigners uh, become very successful and uh, a lot of them became successful in development. Um, these are some areas that uh, we, we've looked at. Also, I've always enjoyed, uh, it's not a big money maker, but I've always enjoyed writing and public speaking. And I do a lot of that. I do several each year. I, I, I'm very good friends with Dr. Sopan. Um, he has the uh, real estate uh, education center and his uh, uh, Thai appraisal foundation. I speak for him a year. Uh, I also speak for Kun Sama, the government housing bank, real estate information center. Uh, I often speak for his organization and recently I spoke uh, for DD Property in Bangkok and Padia. So I really enjoy speaking and uh, I do shows and things. Uh, I've done a TV interview just this week with the Russian TV company. Uh, and uh, I enjoy these kinds of things so I'd like to continue that. Okay, if I were to du duplicate your business success, right, what would be the first step I would have to take if I were to operate a real estate agency in Latin, uh, maybe even as a foreigner? Mm -hmm. Well, again, uh, it's been brought up several times, but, you know, very hard work and uh, integrity, uh, you've got to have that uh, when you're dealing, especially in corporate relocation. You're, you're dealing with very intelligent and uh, educated people, and uh, they need to have a, a high level of confidence in you. There, there's yeah, no. I, Go ahead. I uh, one of my experiences with uh, our real estate agencies in Thailand is uh, it's there's no there's no real um, business experience about or certification about selling. Uh, real estate, it's more like, okay, I have a friend of a friend who needs uh, their house, so let's find somebody for it. Yeah, so then it becomes uh, uh, everybody and uh, I would say their mother is a real estate agent. <laughs> so how, how do you differentiate yourself from that? <laughs> yeah, it's a very good point, uh, especially when we first came. Uh, there was uh, virtually no one that had ever been a true real estate professional where, uh, in their home countries. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was and, uh, and licensed in the state of Washington in the United States. Uh, in the United States, uh, all states uh, license their real estate people. You can't practice real estate uh, there uh, legally uh, without being licensed. And uh, in most states, you have to have college level credits also. Uh, supporting your real estate license and in, in quite a few use also you need to refresh that uh, every some uh, every year or a couple years uh, by actually taking more classes or refreshing the ones that you had so uh, this is one distinction I, I had actually having been a licensed real estate broker uh, in a foreign country and uh, as you mentioned we met at SIPS uh, not only am I a SIPS uh, desi desi designee, uh, certified internet property specialist, but I met my second certification. Uh, <laughs> That's I like, yeah, I like studying, I like learning, and also, you know, as years go by, you want to be uh, up and ready with the latest. Thing. I was very uh, pleased to take the certification a second time, and you probably. Uh, there's only, uh, I think, about maybe 1,500 in the whole world uh, SIPS designees, but I don't think there's too many that have taken the course twice, so another uh, distinction that I have. Uh, could you tell me an example of uh, when it became like, uh, like uh, because you have these um, certifications that it helped you uh, land a client or a big, uh, big deal or something like that? Like that? Did, did my question get to you? 
Now your sound went off for a second. Do that again, please. Yeah, I said, uh, could could you uh, share us a, a real life example of um, because of your certification, right? Uh, you the oh, customer yeah. has the con the confidence to land the deal with you. Ah, I've got a great example. Um, just about a year, a year and a half ago, um, I got a call from a local developer. It was a, a very large Thai developer, and he asked me if I was Clayton Wade, and I said yes, and he asked. Um, are you a, a SIPS designated uh, agent? Do you, have you passed the SIPS? And I said, yes, I have. I'll help you. And he said, well, I have an American buyer and already picked out an apartment and he's ready to buy it from me, but he insists that he won't buy it unless he has a SIPS designated certified agent helping him. So <laughs> I, I need to have you help this man and I need to pay you a commission in order to sell this. <laughs> so I, I think that was a, a fascinating example right there. Okay, great. Um, so now we know that having the certification for being a certified international property specialist and other certifications are, are vital in succeeding in real estate in Thailand, right? People look for it. What would you say is another thing that you um, you would have, or that you could have, that that helps you succeed and sold over more than five thousand properties in Thailand. Well, not to be redundant, but uh, trust and, and confidence are, are absolutely uh, necessary in everything you do professionally. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. Like people, people think that most of the things that are, that are sold as real estate are just transactional. Like people acting or Having having a, a transaction with each other and that's it. How do you build trust in an industry where trust is missing or it's not present in the first place? Like people are doubtful and thinking that how how are you gonna uh, stab me in the back or how are you gonna con me in one way or the other? Well, one thing in dealing with clients and dealing with your customers, um, your ex your knowledge and your experience. All of these things build, I think, a, a, a sense of confidence in you, and you must have these, uh, particularly when you're dealing with uh, corporate professionals and people with a lot of money. When people are, you know, spending a lot of money, they're very particular about who they're going to work with, and they need to sense, they need to have that radar uh, that mm -hmm. you are an experienced person. That trust and confidence, that's that first base you need to get to is, and be in having that is one thing but being a professional you know how to convey that to your client um, there's there's things that you can say and do to let them know that they're with the right person and that's what you need to develop as a professional in this business wow Okay, tell, uh, could you give me an example of uh, a real life, could you share with me a real life example of how that has helped you? Maybe a specific client? Um, getting back to General Motors years ago, um, that was such a significant step in our career and did so much for us. And uh, when I was sitting down day one with uh, the vice president of General Motors uh, discussing their needs, um, it, it's a funny story because actually they didn't want me to do the leasing uh, of houses and condos for their executives. They actually want to take care of their handyman services, repairs for their exhibits, uh, air conditioning services, pest control services. This is what they really wanted and each one, one, two, and th when they asked if I could do it, um, you know, I said, yeah, I can do that for you. I want your leasing. And that was when they asked me about the handyman services. Then they asked me about air conditioning service. Oh, yeah, I can do that for you, but I want to do your leasing. And the same with pest control. But uh, upon completing that portion of the conversation with the vice president of General Motors, you know, I said, hey, you know, by the way, you know I was a licensed real estate agent in the United States. And I, I conveyed a few of the things that I had experienced and what I've been through in property management back there. So their knowing I had these experiences already was what got me to that next step. And before I knew it, we were signing a three-year contract. 
you had three uh, executives to, to be placed and housed in those all over the eastern seaboard, and we had even more after that. So that that's an example of uh, not only having these experiences, but knowing when and where to communicate those jobs. Great. I, I'm just curious. Um, how did how did uh, General Motors find you in the first place? Oh boy, that's a good question. Um, boy, it's been a long. Actually, ah, remember. Thank you. You joggled my mind. Uh, another thing I didn't mention: uh, having that property management experience. We uh, got the job and, and managed over half of the homes at Burrup. Uh, club. Now, Burrapaw Golf Club is a, a very uh, uh, fancy and, and nice golf establish, establishment right across the street from Lam Shabang International Golf Course, and they're both very near the industrial state where uh, all the big car companies are, uh, including uh, BMW and General Motors, Ford, and all of their subsidiary uh, suppliers. So. While we were managing these 52, we had about 52 of the 110 properties, uh, we started bumping into a few of the General Motors uh, executives, and that was how they originally uh, knew about us. So uh, our property management experience in the United States helped us get that job, and ironically, it was that job that helped us get in the door at Motors. Okay. Uh, what's the worst obstacle you could say you face as a business proprietor in Patea or as a real estate agency? Um, comes to mind pretty uh, Back in our home countries, um, there's every country has lots of good, hardworking people and a lot of nice people, um, professionals and, and hardworking people. Here in Thailand, um, a lot of the foreigners that come to the work. I'm not talking about uh, corporate executives. These are all educated and, and uh, uh, hardworking professional people. But a lot of the foreigners that come here and kind of land here for a job uh, are kind of a ragtag group. We've had some pretty big challenges uh, working with uh, foreigners and dealing with some foreigners in our business. I, I would say um, our greatest obstacle and uh, uh, damage experience uh, has been dealing with uh, local foreigners. So, Hi, foreigners. What <laughs> so what I'm getting is that um, some of the foreigners that land in Patea are not uh, what you would expect um, the, the people to be, right? Normally, uh, I would definitely say that. You, uh, you know, in Bangkok, there's lots of uh, international uh, real estate agencies, you know, CBRE, Bubbles, uh, Jones Dow, uh, Knight Frank. Uh, there's a lot of great international companies, but down here for many, many years, they hadn't arrived yet. So uh, you have to be a little careful uh, who you deal with down here, and you have to be. Uh, also a little careful in the developments and the developers you deal with. So it is getting better. We do have the big international agencies down here now. And so we are uh, grooming our foreigners and our foreign professionals in the state agency down here. So in the past, it was a, a real challenge and obstacle for us. But it is getting better. How, how, how do you sense that someone is not um, authentic with you or or um, you know that he, he's not he's not the type that you want to re uh, deal with. Well, un unfortunately, as the statistics show, uh, it's not always that easy. Um, it's usually uh, some of the most uh, dangerous people in the profession are the you know the ones with the uh, smile and the handshake and take you out to dinner and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. You have to do a little homework, and uh, if you if you turn around and you ask around, usually it's not too difficult to find out who are the uh, top agencies and top professionals. I would say do a little bit of homework, uh, and not just go into the first big smiling face. Well, 
that's good advice. And um, so let's let's come to look at the brighter side. Uh, what's the most successful thing uh, you would say happened as a as a realtor for you, or as the owner of uh, the I forgot the name <laughs> Premier International? Yeah. Um, actually, if you ask me this personally or professionally, uh, I have the same answer. And I've ended a number of my uh, my talk years this way as well. It's uh, the opportunity to get to know Thai people, um, whether it's in business or uh, you know a extremely wealthy landowner or, or a developer or a, a Thai uh, uh, public figure who owns an apartment or a house they want me to help rent for them or just sitting in front of the local 7-Eleven and having a bowl of quick uh, it's, it's like That's been the thing that's been uh, a real uh, danger for me. And, uh, and that this business has also brought into my life. It helped me to meet lots of nice uh, local Thai people and uh, uh, Bangkok Thais as well. Great. Um... After having like 20, more than 25 years of uh, real estate experience under your belt, right? What would you want to share uh, or give advice to the audience? Uh, it's as far as getting in the Say again? As far as getting in the business, coming into yeah. the real estate. Yeah, yeah. In, in the real estate business. Number one, be ready. Again, it keeps coming up over and over. It's a lot of hard work. If it's not a lot, lot of hard work, um, you haven't uh, done things uh, properly. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work, and you need to really learn to um, know people, to learn how to read people, and how to deliver what you want. Uh, one of the quickest ways uh, to land a client's confidence is them to know that you know what you're doing, you have what they want, and the real big one, they have to have that, you're going to take care of them. So these are really important to confide in your, your clients this way, that you're going to be there to take care of them. Um, if they know that you're honest and they believe you're going to take care of them, um, they'll, they'll be more patient um, and they'll be able to go over uh, uh, a few little mistakes and things if necessary to get where they're wanting to go. Remember, it, uh, it's kind of a jungle out there in the real estate business. So when clients uh, do think they've found uh, a good agent professional, uh, they tend to want to stick with them. And that's what I would uh, uh, suggest to people. Be ready for a lot of hard work and learn to communicate confidence and trust. All right, and now for the audience, if you're listening to this, you got value, if you had a new insight or learned something new, something applicable for yourself, or you want to celebrate his accomplishments, you can do, do so by writing in the comments column, or you can uh, write to him directly in the email that's uh, showing up, I think, in uh, right now. And uh, to get in touch with Clayton personally, it's Clayton at premierinternational.com. All right, uh, Clayton, before we go, so how was this interview for you? Oh, it's been fun. It's been great. Like, like I said, I enjoy public speaking, um, and I enjoy real estate very much. A after 28 years, I, I still love going into a, a really nice house, a really nice apartment, and uh, talking about these things is, is a joy for me. So I've uh, enjoyed it a lot. I really want to thank you for inviting me. All right. Uh, just to tease, just to tease you a bit, right? What's the one thing that nobody knows about you? Oh, that comes up. Fair. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the fact that I was the national fencing coach, something that really seems to surprise people and uh, puts a smile on people's faces. So, I would probably say that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have known that for myself too, right? Okay, so uh, what would you like the audience to have something to remember you by? Well, I, I, I hope after uh, 28 years in the business, I 
I'm still fresh and uh, good information, and, and that's uh, how I'd like to be remembered. Okay, great. So that's our interview today with our um, real estate, uh, the successful real estate realtor in the Eastern Seaboard, Clayton Waite. Thank you today for being with us here today, and I would love to come down to meet you in Patias soon. Take care. That'll be good. Have Thank a nice you very much. Bye-bye.